Alright, let's now go to Damien. Damien Blood March. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings. Here we go. Hark. What it, what it just said, hark, I was like, what? I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter, for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, there's more. I, I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. Oh. No, no. Can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. Apparently that's a thing. Oh. I just don't understand that speak. Like, is this how your kids communicate how you kids communicate with each with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See dad, kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever and decided that what they needed to do was bring it back to the eighteen hundreds. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things you know about it back, you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like, the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie? Still got a B, though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over at me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards. Hark. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Wow, pretty awesome looking house. I make a short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? Estate? The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps to the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Uh, hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flicks dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Those sandwiches and... Like, sandwich-looking things at the center looks cool, though. Hark. A pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. Oh, look, it's Lumiere. That's cool. You have a Lumiere. What's, uh... What's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked. Creaking open when I knocked? I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Right. Oh. Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. 
This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. <laughs> through, through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward. There's more to see. Hmm. Reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Hmm. And this is the library. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Um, look out the window, look at the butterflies, pick a book, that's enough of the tour. Look at the butterflies. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice mm. bugs. I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometimes. Is he trying to pin something on me? I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Mm. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Mm. No. Pick up a book. You know, Hark, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounded reading, surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime, and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of the breath, out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Ah! Okay, I think that's enough. What is this, like fan fiction? Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collection. Okay, Damien, looking out the window. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. Is he... Is he mowing the lawn shirtless? He's doing push-ups. Is he doing push-ups shirtless? With his daughter on his back. Probably not. <sighs> he sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. So he's he's right next to right next to Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Victorians spend at least twenty hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Oh. Please, will you join me for tea? Sure. I follow him into a sitting room where finger foods have already been set upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. <laughs> Damien smiles to himself. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it. When the fact the high, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of the day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they are served. Oh. oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Um I like your cake. Oh. It's a cloak, actually, but thank you. Victorian fashion is very important to me. You pull it off quite well. Do we want him to pull it off well? Oh, thank you. Regardless of my historical learnings, it's very important to me to present myself well. It has taken a long time to come up with a style that's both true to form and representative of myself, but I'm very happy with how I dress. I, get, I do get some strange looks, yes, but it's something that brings me a great deal of joy, so I don't mind. To be able to wake up in the morning, I pick from my closet a variety of cloaks, waistcoats, top hats, and even binders that are period-appropriate feels amazing. You wear top hats? Oh. Hmm. You, you don't? What got you interested in goth stuff? I'd wear a top hat if I owned one. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Oh. Sorry? Haha, <laughs> did you guys see a marching band? I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Mm. Of course. But it's, you know, the song. A man who made me listen to it. Seriously? 
I'm sorry, I'm lost too. I have no idea what you're talking about, Dad Hark. Oh. Hark Dad. I'd love to see a marching band. Oh, because he's Blood March. I don't know if that's the reason. Nevertheless, I've always had a love of art. For art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? It's not like... It's like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. Mm. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly mm. horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the mm. same. Tell me, Hark, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing something, someone talk about things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. I like watch soap making videos on the internet. Love me some more jumbles. I learned how to juggle once. Gravity is an interesting thing, and um, I believe that juggling is the pinnacle of humankind's interaction with the gravitational arts. Huh. Interesting. I don't think that we're a good love connection either, it seems. I started out with scars, but now I can comfortably juggle balls. Juggling pins is currently, um, out of my purview. Oh. Damien looks at me quizzically, but shrugs it off. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. This is beautiful. Oh. My garden. It's beautiful. Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Damon leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower, <gasps> my favorite color, off of a vine. Lilium bulbiferum, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? My loins are ablaze. Thou art the tightest. Three cheers for sweet revenge. Um. Three cheers for sweet revenge? Hmm. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Oh, well. And that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Snapdragons, honeysuckles, sunflowers. I'm a foodie. Honeysuckle. They smell really good. And then you can eat the tiniest little drop of nectar when you pull the stem out. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Oh, how sweet of you, Damien. He he would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. He would put together a bouquet for me. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly a phone rings. Oh, Hark, will you excuse me? I must take this. I love the ringtone. I love that. Dun, 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 dun. He pulls the cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Me too. Go for it. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Fix that guard. Oh, um. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see. There we go. Um. Like this? Ah. 
Got it. Go! Flip it over. There we go. Did I really break it in those many pieces? Whew, that was a close one. Uh oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ah! Hark, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat, hem with the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. I bet you it's got something to do with his son. <sighs> Everything is perfectly fine, but I ah, it's Lucian. Called it. What's wrong? He appears to have well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Oh. Oh, hello, Hugo. Dame and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious-looking Hugo. I don't Hugo. know. Hey, Damien, you're in record oh, time. No. I wouldn't miss this for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are in Trouble rodeo. Mm. What is it this time? Mm -hmm. This Damien you have to see to believe. This Damien you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into the darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle school t schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. Oh, these two. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. Interesting, it's both it's a both um, Hugo's kid and um, Damien's kid. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and I see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me! The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumb A. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked uh. me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second, Lucian. Did you try to cask of Amontillado, Amontillado Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him. What's, uh, what's cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with a promise of wine and of, of, of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Oh, I studied Edgar Allan Poe, but I didn't remember that one. It's a lovely story. So, wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes. Ernest, 20 minutes. Dad, what? it took you 20 minutes. Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amentalado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. Whoa. <laughs> Just like Amanda. It's only five pages long and there is no movie. Haha. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for uh... me. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Dame and Hugo both have their heads both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. Alright, I'm filing this under what the don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. You shouldn't celebrate about being suspended. That's not cool, guys. Stop acting like that's actually cool. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmark, you too. March, you too. Thank you for your meditation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Lucian, Damien, and I all pile into my car 
and begins the drive home. Lucien immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Oh, no. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that, too. Maybe you can spend this next next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want to own your own... You want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. This kid was trying to wall off another kid in a tomb. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. <laughs> I love you, son. Lucian continues staring out of the window. Love you, too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. Well, this date kind of went awkward. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of this car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucian's bricklaying was pretty good. So there's your silver lining. There is that, yes. He's probably just going through a phase. I really admire how you handle that. Does this kind of thing happen a lot? Does this kind of thing happen a lot? Once in a blue moon, yes. He rather enjoys pranking his classmates and teachers and me. Wow, I don't know if I could handle that, honestly. Ah, don't fret. I've learned to be patient with him. See you around soon? It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Eh? I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo! What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers, Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I... I... Told you I wanted a two-bed, two-bath, shabby, cheek-cut cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular-sized mm -hmm. house? I... I don't Aww. know. How was afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... He lured, lured Ernest down to the cellar with a promise of, fine vi fine, of a fine vintage and try, then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? Lucian livestreamed the entire thing. Of course he did. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damon guy is a character, but he's really good company and surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. I'm thinking A minus? Cargo short, friendship, bat, Victorian, basement, O. Simply oh, hey. a majestic evening. Why does he sound like Ray to me? He sounds like Pixel Prattle. Welcome. Interview with you a vampire. Alright.